In the U.S., the Securities and Exchange Commission, or SEC, has been changing their policies what feels like every other month on how they regulate cryptos, NFTs, and DAOs. And this uncertain regulatory future has driven Web3 companies to set up outside of Silicon Valley and outside of the U.S. altogether, specifically in countries such as the British Virgin Islands, Grand Cayman, and the Bahamas. And they are doing this because those countries have committed to maintaining regulations that are friendly towards crypto companies. Oh my God, it is so bright. I need to put these back on. I work with Web3 companies at various stages of development, and I wanted to share my experience of what it takes to get set up in a crypto-friendly country a move that is usually only available to crypto whales. Now, because the Cayman Islands have a stereotype of being a tax shelter, some investors will not invest in companies based there. For example, Andreessen Horowitz, one of the biggest VC firms in the world, have a thesis that they want to keep tech in the US and believe that startups should work with the regulators to create business-friendly policies. However, being located outside of North America does open you up to investors located in other regions, including Europe, Asia, and South America. So that is something to consider when raising capital. I got first-hand insight on the system steps and processes that the Cayman Islands are going through to ensure that you are operating above board. And crypto companies are not exempt from these standards. To illustrate this point, Binance, the largest crypto trading platform in the world, tried to move its headquarters to Cayman, but was shut down by the local monetary authority in 2021 and is no longer authorized to operate there. The filing didn't say why, just that there was an investigation and and the results were not good for Binance. And the reason so many Web3 companies are setting up in the Cayman Islands and other, and other countries with firm crypto regulations isn't for tax reasons, as I mentioned earlier, although we will go over taxes a little bit later. The main appeal, at least for the Cayman Islands, is a thing called VASP. And in 2020, the government passed the Virtual Asset Service Provider Act, or VASP, and VASP allows Web3 companies to do a few key things. First, it legitimizes digital assets as things that are separate from a security like shares or stock in a company. There are some instances where a digital asset becomes a security, and that is covered in VASP too. This is in comparison to the United States, where this distinction is not so clear. To operate under VASP, you do need to obtain a license from the local monetary authority. You can't just show up and start issuing virtual assets. Second, governance tokens are not considered securities under the VASP. So organizations can issue what is called virtual service tokens to give people access to a DAO without having to register that token as a security or share. The VASP also allows companies to solicit members of the public in non-US countries. What your company does will determine what type of entity you set up. Most, if not all, crypto companies need to form what is called an exempt entity. 90% of Cayman corporations are this exempt entity type. And now that you have your entity type, there are two main options for actually getting set up. Option one is to use a registered agent on the island. And option two is to get set up with an organization called Cayman Enterprise City or CEC. If you want the business to be based in Cayman and the employees remain in the US or wherever your employees currently are, you will need to go with a registered agent. A registered agent is a business that accepts tax and legal documents on your behalf. They help you maintain corporate compliance and either remind you to file certain forms every year or file them on your behalf. Using a registered agent and having no physical presence in the Cayman Islands is the cheapest way to go. It costs about $3,000 to set up and then $2,000 a year to maintain. And as far as setup timelines, it takes about six weeks to get up and running. If you want or need people to physically move to Cayman for the business to operate, then you go with option number two. 
CEC. CEC already has a very active community of blockchain and Web3 companies. If you are eligible to set up in one of the CEC technology parks, they will help get you set up with a trade certificate, which is kind of like a business license. And of course, they'll also help you get set up with your work visa. Additionally, they do provide co-working space on the island. And for some companies, this is going to be really important. They also offer import exemptions. Most companies that go the CEC route start off with one or two employees on the island and we'll get to why that is later. And just so you know, there is no minimum amount of time that employees must spend in the country to keep their work visa active. You could be there for 365 days or one day. What will actually keep employees in country is personal banking. In order for employees to get a Cayman bank account, and this is a personal checking or savings account, not a business account, you need to provide utility bills like electricity, cell phone, or water, or proof that you rent or own a residence in the country. And if you're gonna pay $5,000 a month for an apartment, you probably want to actually be living there. Well, at least I would. If you are eligible to go with CEC, and physically move some employees to the island. That option is more expensive up front, but it can save you a lot of money in the long run. I would budget at least $20,000 US for the first year of operations and getting set up, and then $18,000 a year after that to maintain the entity's legal status. And each additional employee will be another $15,000 Per year. So you can see why most companies start out with just one employee and then build from there. Timelines are comparable to getting set up in the US, so going with CEC is not going to save you a ton of time. And just to put a number on that, it varies, but on average you can expect it to take about 12 weeks. And that number is just based on my experience. There are lots of factors that could make it go up or go down. Now on to everyone's favorite topic taxes. Now this section is going to be blissfully short because so long as you maintain a good standing you are tax exempt in the Cayman Islands. No payroll tax, no income tax, nada. But before you get too excited, if you are a U.S. citizen or resident or you're residing in the U.S., you still have to file taxes there. And you will need to pay income taxes on any of the salary that the Cayman Corp pays you. At the time of making this video, getting a Cayman business bank account is really hard for crypto companies. The Cayman banks are not really interested in supporting those customers and the bigger crypto companies that need that fiat currency account actually do their banking out of the Bahamas. But if you're a DAO or crypto company who keeps their treasury in crypto, this isn't necessarily a problem. Whether or not Cayman is a good option for you and your project will really come down to your specific circumstances. For those that are in it for the long run, this is definitely a, an option to consider. Even though the process is expensive, I think it's a good insurance policy, at least until the US figures out how they want to regulate crypto and other blockchain technologies.